well now, let's see. Glock has the 20, 29, and 40 that are 10 millimeter or 40 caliber pistols. Then we have the 22, 23, 24, 27, and 35 series that are also 40 caliber, a 42 that is a 380 caliber, a 31, 32, and 33 that are 357 calibers. We also have the 17, 19, 26, 34, 43, 45, and 48 that are 9 millimeter or 38 caliber. Lest we forget the 21, 20, 36, and 41 that are 45 ACP calibers and 37, 38, and 39, which are 45 gap pistols. Confused yet? In 2019, Glock announced the G44. It was not due out to the public until January of 2020. On January 23rd, I went to an online provider to see if they had the Glock G44. And, sure enough, it was on the list. However, it was not available, but could be backordered. I clicked the option to notify me when the product came in, and true to form, I was. It was time for me to cut bait or fish, and I decided to fish and placed an order. I had read some review articles and viewed a few videos on the G44 by those who were fortunate enough to receive one for test and evaluation purposes. All the reviews were favorable, with the one caveat, the 10-round capacity. I'll get into capacity later. Hello, this is The Range Ronin, and for now, I will just tackle a video reviewing the G44 according to my viewpoint, since I had already written a review of it for a firearms form back in February of 2020. Since that written review, nothing has changed my thinking in regard to the Glock G44. The operating system of the G44 is a simple blowback mechanism, similar to the G42 380 auto pistol. The power of the 22 long rifle is, by far, less than the centerfire calibers chambered by Glock, and a blowback system makes sense, since all other 22 rimfire pistols on the market use a blowback system. The second thing that can be said regarding the G44 is that the dimensions are identical to a Glock G19. Those who have a Glock G19 will become immediately familiar with the pistol the first time they pick one up. What they will not be familiar with is the weight. From the technical data, the loaded weight of the G44 is only 16.4 ounces. That is only a pound of pistol. One of the major differences between the G44 and other Glock pistols aside from weight, is a slide that is polymer with a reinforced steel rail. The slide incorporates front and rear serrations and standard Glock sights. If you only had the frame of the G44 in your hand, you would swear that you were holding a G19. Everything about the frame, including the trigger, is the same as that found on the G19. But I want to focus a bit on that slide. Is this simply a 22 conversion kit that can be purchased online for about $295? Some, like myself, would say that they would rather have a complete pistol like the G44 rather than having to replace the slide each time that they wanted to shoot 22 ammunition and are willing to pay an extra $135 for such pistol. There is some credence to that, I suppose. One thing to consider is that 22 conversion kits are just that, kits that convert from one caliber to the 22 cartridge. The G44 is a complete, integrated package that is designed specifically for the 22 cartridge. Now I have 22 caliber pistols, such as Ruger Mark IV, Smith & Wesson Victory, and others. So, what compelled me to purchase the G44? One reason was curiosity. I really wanted to see how Glock was going to pull this off. Although I would have been more excited over, say, a Glock 9mm carbine. A second reason is that I wanted something to take to the range for practice, something that I was familiar with, since I have been carrying the G48 and G45. G44 
cheap practice with less expensive ammunition is always a plus, if you do it in moderation. I say moderation because one could get hooked on shooting with a lot less recoil and tend to forget to practice with something a lot more powerful, say one that is carried for personal defense. In a way, in getting back to the slide of the G44, and realizing that the G44 is a rimfire and not a centerfire pistol, I was really interested in the striker configuration, the weight of the recoil spring, dry firing, etc. The slide is pleasingly done and removes from and installs on the frame in a typical Glock fashion. The pistol itself is a Gen 5 series, which means that a few upgrades over previous series are incorporated. One such upgrade is the Glock Marksman Barrel, or GMB. Polygonal barrel rifling is six grooves with a 1 in 15.98 inch twist. Of course, polygonal rifling is a type of gun barrel rifling where the traditional sharp edged lands and grooves are replaced by less edged hills and valleys in a polygonal pattern. There has been quite a bit of controversy regarding polygonal rifling and the effect of leading. Leading is the buildup of lead in the bore that happens in nearly all firearms that fire high velocity lead bullets. This lead buildup must be cleaned out regularly or the barrel will gradually become constricted, resulting in a higher than normal discharge pressure. In the extreme case, and especially with larger calibers, increased discharge pressures can result in a catastrophic incident. No mention of bullet types, letter jacketed, is mentioned in the instruction manual provided with the pistol. With that said, I would try to limit my use of ammunition to jacketed types. The rear sight, the usual white outline square notch, is adjustable for windage and improvement over a fixed rear sight. Sight radius is 6.22 inches. The slide internals look like any other Glock. The integration of steel and polymer is so well done as to be unnoticeable, unless you were looking for specific things, which of course I was. The captured recoil spring and guide should come to no surprise for anyone familiar with Glock pistols. At the rear of the slide, there is a slide plate as Glock calls it. Glock warns that you do not try to remove or manipulate the slide plate or the polymer part of the slide. Any manipulation would void the warranty. The reason is that it is part of the steel reinforcement structure for the slide. The last point on the slide is the chamber loaded indicator, which is a simple slot at the rear of the chamber that when looked down into will indicate if a cartridge is chambered or not. Personally, I always regard a firearm as loaded if the action is closed. Going back to the frame a bit, I find a lot of similarities with the G44's frame, as with its larger caliber siblings. Since the G44 is a Gen 5 series, the finger grooves are not present, as was on the Gen 3 and Gen 4 versions. The grip texture is definitely Gen 5, with its diamond pattern of texturing. This makes for an exceptionally good gripping surface without being obtrusive to the hand. The bottom of the grip is flared slightly and the magwell is slightly beveled. The magazine release button can be converted to a right side only while the slide lock is ambidextrous. My first duty when bringing the G44 home was to attach the large beaver tail backstrap which is something that I do with all my Glock pistols that can sport the beaver tail grip adapter. Glock 44 pistols feature four interchangeable back straps, two with and two without a beaver tail to vary the circumference and the shape of the frame, 
which helps you in the fitting of the G44 to your specific hand size. All internals are virtually Glock, while the trigger assembly is a standard Glock safe action fare with integral trigger safety lever. The trigger pull weight on my scale is 5.8 pounds, which occurs after a short bit of take up. Trigger pull is typical Glock, a slight bit of mush until the striker is released. As usual, it only takes about 1 8 inch to cock the pistol. Trigger reset is also typical Glock, brief. Although the G44 is the same, dimension-wise, as the Glock G19, do not think that you can interchange them. They are both 7.28 inches in length and are 5.04 inches in height. The G44 is slightly less width at 1.26 inches. The G19 is 1.34 inches wide. Swapping slides on G44 and G19 frames is a no-go. According to Glock, very few of the internal components are the same between the G44 and G19. Most of the internal firing mechanism is unique to the G44 due to the rimfire caliber. As with most Glock pistols, an accessory slot is available at the front end for mounting the accessories, except for a Slim Jim holder which is not yet available for Glock pistols, or a bayonet. And yes, there are bayonets available for Glock pistols. But what would you be thinking, Tackleberry? John Wick didn't even use one. The G44 comes with two 10-round magazines that are somewhat unique. Granted that they only hold 10 rounds, but Glock found this capacity to be the most reliable. The magazine incorporates load assist buttons on each side of the magazine and it means to view the rounds in the magazine. There is also an indicator at the bottom of the magazine that indicates when the magazine is fully loaded. The magazines are the same physical size as the G19 magazines. Therefore, it is more than theoretically possible to use a magazine extension to provide a pinky rest for those with large hands. More on that in Upgrades. The magazine is designed so that it better enables a fresh cartridge to load into the chamber. A protrusion at the front of the magazine provides better alignment of the cartridge into the chamber. Glock notes that the side buttons be pressed only far enough to allow loading one cartridge at a time to ensure proper stacking of the cartridges in the magazine.
Most are against dry firing a 22 caliber firearm because of the damage that the firing pin can do to the breech face or to the firing pin itself. There is no mention of dry firing in the instruction manual. Now, it is known that you must pull the trigger to disassemble the Glock pistol. And I felt that the question needed to be asked, so I placed a call to Glock. The response I received was to limit the amount of dry firing to disassembly only. Otherwise, use a snap cap or other device to prevent damage to the pistol. The Glock G44 features the same safety mechanisms as its larger caliber brothers. First is the trigger safety. The trigger safety is a lever incorporated into the trigger. The second is the firing pin safety. The firing pin safety mechanically blocks the firing pin from moving forward in the ready to fire condition. And the third is the drop safety. The trigger bar rests on the safety ramp within the trigger mechanism housing. Prior to the range session, the pistol was disassembled, cleaned, and lubricated according to the directions provided by Glock in the instruction manual. As a side note, as a technical writer by trade, it is important to me that someone takes the time to read what I write. I am sure that the technical writers at Glock appreciate that I took the time to read the instruction manual. First, the fit of the Glock G44 is awfully familiar in my hand, having shot a few Glock pistols in the past. I am not one to do magazine dumps, as I do not need to add drama to the shooting event. Like some others who do video reviews, I do not hear Ludwig von Beethoven's Fifth Symphony in C minor playing in the background, although I might hum a few bars of Inagata de Vida on a few occasions, if I feel frisky. Playtime is usually spent at seven yards with occasional excursions to greater distances if I feel spunky. Primarily, I am checking for functioning of the pistol and relative accuracy from seven to ten yards. This day was no different. I only had CCI Mini Mag, 22 long rifle, hollow point, 40 grain CPHP at 1260 feet per second, federal target grade performance, 40 grain, lead round nose at 1,200 feet per second, and Remington Thunderbolt, 40 grain, lead round nose at 1,258 feet per second with me. The Federal and the Remington were the first up, as I had hoped to clean any leading out by running the CCI Mini Mag afterwards. The first two magazines were loaded with Federal, and the G44 was ready to go. I was really interested in how the 4.02 inch block polygonal GMB was going to handle this ammunition. The Federal target grade performance functioned perfectly, as did the Remington Thunderbolt, as did CCI Minimag. There were absolutely no FTFs, FTE, short stroking, or other malady. Point of impact was merely point of aim with a slight six clock hold at 10 yards. Belt recall is next to nothing. The Federal target grade performance muzzle blast was near nothing while the Remington Thunderbolt and CCI Mini Mags made a mini flamethrower out of the Glock G44. And speaking of the magazines, the magazine has two load assist buttons in the sides of the magazine that are pushed down for inserting fresh rounds. It is best not to run the button all the way to the bottom, but to push down just enough to insert the cartridge. Since rimfire ammunition has a rim, this ensures that the cartridges are properly stacked in the magazine. Push the cartridges all the way to the back of the magazine for best performance results. Just something to think about. A loaded Gen 5 G19 weighs 30.16 ounces. A loaded G44 weighs 15.94 ounces. I am used to a full-size 1911 weighing in at around 45.92 ounces at the end of my arms. The weight of the loaded Glock G44 is just two ounces shy of the weight of two eight round 1911 45 ACP magazines. Think about that a bit. The Glock G44 weighs less 
than what I would carry for spare ammunition to feed my 1911. Shooting the Glock G44 is just a hoot to shoot and made for a very pleasurable range experience. Cautions are given by many about changing the sights that come with the G44. Although the front sight is the usual screw-in Glock sight, the rear sight is the concern. Being that the slide is polymer, damage could occur to the slide if the rear sight was changed. The rear fully adjustable sight of the Glock G44 is perfectly adequate for the pistol, as most sights are. Like the higher caliber pistols, the sights are polymer. Since the G44 grip length is the same size as the G19, I have always found the grip to be lacking in my hand. The magazines for the G44 are the same size as that used in the G19 and other Glock pistols. I was curious if a magazine extension would work with the G44 magazine. A couple of magazine extensions were ordered to try. They are inexpensive, and with the help of the Glock magazine tool, the plastic punch, plastic mallet, and a lot of patience, the bases were changed out not so quickly. The magazine bases are extremely tight to remove, and removing them takes a few four-letter words. The Packmire grip extenders, however, fit perfectly. The magazine extender finishes the pistol off, as the texture is the same as the front strap of the G44, and provides a wee bit more space at the bottom of the grip for my hand. The Glock G44 is just a fun critter to shoot. If you carry a Glock G19 and need cheap practice, the G44 can feed 22 ammunition all day without breaking the bank. It does like the hotter ammunition, and mine did well with CCI Minimags. I'm sure that CCI Velocitor or CCI Stinger would do well in hollow point ammunition on varmints and small game. For plinking, the CCI Minimag just may punch your ticket. One question that might be on people's mind regarding the Glock 44 is reliability. We do have a nylon reinforced polymer frame and a hybrid of polymer and steel in the slide. From what I have read, Glock spent close to three years testing and developing the G44, which is why models like the G45, G46, G47, and G48 passed it up in reaching the market. The G44 was still in R&D. During that time, they used no less than 141 different rimfire loads in testing, expending over 1.2 million rounds in the process. Federal, who supported the effort, used everything in test guns from 42 grain subsonic to CCI stingers with no problem. Of course, magazine capacity is not as high as, say, the Taurus TX-22 at 16 plus 1, or the Caltech CP33 at 33 plus 1. But neither of those are Glocks, which are in a league of their own. Conversion kits for the Glock G19 are available, and some reliability issues have surfaced using these conversion kits. What you get with the G44 is a proven and tested pistol already chambered in 22 caliber. Given the price difference between some of these kits and a G44, a pistol specifically designed around the 22 long rifle cartridge, the G44 is the better deal, in my opinion. The G44 has completed the spectrum of Glock pistols that I wanted, and maybe I just needed this one as well. Besides, there is always room for another 22 pistol, and just maybe a Glock G22. Well, it is a 22, isn't it? Talk about two ends of the spectrum. By the way, a threaded barrel is already separately offered for those who would like to run a can on their G44. And as a last word, the Glock G44 is made in the US of A. This completes this video review of the Glock G44 Compact 22 caliber pistol. I'll be producing other gun and gear reviews, and I hope that you will stop in and view them. In the meantime, Stay safe out there.